We're away with the biggest show on Australian television. Welcome, boys. First question is, are you tired? Are you exhausted from watching that fucking legend, Travis Head, bat brilliantly at the Oval last night in the World Test Championship? 146 runs not out. Smudge Smith on 95. I'm reinvigorated with cricket after seeing that. What did you boys think? I took. Uh, I went to bed about 11.30 and the last thing I did before I went to bed was take $1.97 the Aussies. So wow. I was happy to wake up and see what the score was. I'm still surprised they're $1.80 mm-hmm. though. I think it's a great price. So that's your advice? Bet up on Australia? Yeah, become absolutely. become the best test nation in the world? I don't think uh, India can win from here. I can see Australia putting on another two, 300, getting to 500 minimum, 600 maybe, and that rules India out. And I can never back a draw, so it leaves you one hope. Great. That up. Fizzer? Yeah, I didn't um, watch as much as what you guys did. I went to sleep earlier but um, went to bed thinking that Australia were looking all right. So I traded out of the draw, which I'm sort of happy I did. Um, back Laid it at $6 and backed it back at $8 and went to bed. So that was it. And then, yeah, I think Australia will win from here. Let's move to racing. It's probably the last big day of the racing season. We've got two good group ones. The last major group one is the Stradbroke. Mm. Think about it, the dominant favourite, Joe Pride, friend of the den. We'd love to see him win. Can think about it, win the Stradbroke, the king. It's my best bet of the day. Wow. Seven from eight. Seven from eight. Three. I think we might get better. It's about 310 at the moment. But sat wide uh, in a really strong rating race last time, the Kingsford Smith. I think that the horses that competed in that race will run the trifecta in the Stradbroke. Box them up, but it's my best bet of the day for sure. Sat wide, extra 100 metres. So so what were your three selections? Uh, I thought Converge was the main danger. Flash came up the inside, running second last start to think about. I'd also put in Rothfire, which was on pace in that race, ran well. Uh, Valana as well, sat wide on pace the whole race and finished about sixth. And I'd also stick in number 20, Opal Ridge. So... Nine, five, one, three, twenty. But the only win bet I'm having in the race is think about it. Okay, but you mean, obviously been going good at the exotics, so you want to keep rolling. The group one exotics has been it's your been go. good. Yeah. It's been good, but yeah, let's do it again. Cool. Do you have anything more to add about the Stradbroke Fizzer? No, mate, he's Kings are hard to beat in the group one, so I think everyone should probably listen to him. And I found the 18 myself, Hawaii 5 but probably just because of the really light weight it gets in with, be giving him something to catch, I'd say. Yeah, cool. Let's move on to the two-year-olds over 1,600 metres, the JJ Atkins. Uh, three bets for me, three overlays. Number seven, Tan Hauser. Number 14, Azula. And number 17, which I thought was the biggest overlay in the race, number uh, 17, Miracle of Love, $12. So Tan Hauser about six fifty. Azula $5, and Miracle of Love, $12. Okay, something to work with there. Mm. Yeah. Visit JJ Atkins. Yeah, no real opinion in that race, mate. They're all up-and-coming horses and... Kings has found one with a different form line to what my form's found. He's come, he's coming out of a maiden, I think, winning at Ram, his horse. So, look, Waller and J-Mac, they're a hard combo to beat. So I'm happy to stay out of that race. Sweet. Let's roll into your set of tips. I, I spoke to you briefly off air and you said that you're quite confident about tomorrow. So that's what yeah, the plan is. Yeah, I think I can find hopefully a couple of winners. Yeah, that's the plan anyway. So um, we'll start in Belmont. I found race four, number nine, Miss Dracova. It's first up. Looks a good good bet around the $5 mark. Race five, number eight in Belmont as well, Senorita Dorotea. Um, very stiff last start, wide the whole way, hung on, just got beat. Drops back to 1,000 metres, should get a suck run, barrier one. Happy with it. And my best bet to, on the weekend is race four in Morpherville, number nine. It's called Hope at Hand. Goes from being top weight in its last couple of runs to dropping right down the bottom and racing against the older horses. Quite like that sort of formula. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll be really hard to beat. Morpherville race eight, number two, Rialto. It's about $3.70. Should go to the front, give a kick. Morpherville Parks, one week back up as well. So everything about that's a good tick. Race nine, number one, the Gov at Morpherville as well, about $4.40. Look, it's going to get caught wide, hopefully get some cover. Um, won really well last start, think it can repeat. I found one shorty in Ramwick, race six, number 11. It's first up, put up. $1.90 and it's into 165 I couldn't take that, but I'll back it best of the best on Saturday and see what happens. It's called Passagiata. Mm-hmm. And then race eight, number 12 at Ramwick, quite keen on Space Warp. It's about $4.40. Um, flew home in Brisbane last start and it's gone back to Sydney, so hopefully can get us the cash there. That's a great set. You spoke with a lot of confidence. Yeah. 
Unreal. Can't wait to rip into all those bets on Happy Saturday, days. the King's Own. Plenty there. Um, I've got three apart from the uh, Group 1s. Let's start Eagle Farm Race 6, number three, without a fight. This horse came over from the UK and had its first start in Australia in the Melbourne Cup where it ran 10th. Now, it's come back looking like a much better horse. Only had one run back since then. It won over 1,800 at Eagle Farm. It changed trainers to Anthony Friedman and it won in really impressive fashion. $3.30, I'm all over it. Then go to Randwick, race three, number 12. An old favourite from mine. I tipped it a couple of weeks ago, Boot Scooter. Uh, it was drawn wide again last time when I tipped it and didn't have a lot of luck, got too far back. So last three starts, it's had no luck. It's drawn wide the last three starts. This time it's drawn barrier six, over an extra 100 metres. 1,500 will suit it much better at Randwick. And the other tip, Sandown race two, number seven, a lightly raced horse called Extra Two, coming off a Kyneton win in very fast uh, last sectionals. First run in the city, I think it can handle the rising class and looks a really impressive horse. So those are the three other bets apart from the group ones. Unreal, we've got plenty to work with. Absolutely. I was talking about Aussie legends earlier. Buddy Franklin goes to 350 games in the uh, AFL tonight when they play St Kilda. Takes him to 20th on the all-time list. What do you think? Can you find a bet for the for the punters uh, to have if they're well, home watching it? I love an occasion. I'm all over the Swans. I took a dollar sixty-five the Swans. Ooh. I know very little about AFL, but I do know what gets teams motivated. And yes. Buddy's three fiftieth will get him going for sure at the SCG on a Thursday night. Get on, awesome. And Origin on Origin selections will come out Sunday. Mm. Are they going to do anything drastic? Well, Cleary's obviously gone, so. Who's going to play seven? I think that Nico Hines has to be in the team. He's earned the right to either play six or seven. I think he will get the seven jersey, which means who's going to play six? I'd love to see Cody Walker there. Mm. But I think whoever they play at six has to complement Nico. So I think that the halves should be built around Nico. Other changes. What about Nico at six and Reynolds at seven? Yeah. Well, Nico has to be there in my opinion. Okay. So the other, whether he's at six or is it seven, the other player has to complement well, him. I reckon if Nick has to be there, it's almost certain that they will pick him at seven and Luai will stay at six. Could be. I think you probably know, think that as well. I so. do think that. Yeah, I think I think that will be the combination. I think in the centres will be Luttrell and, and Turbo. Yeah. I would play Luttrell and Campbell Graham. I would play Cody at six and Nico at seven. Mm. Okay. Be interesting to see if that happens. Anything to add, Fizz? No, I just think Reynolds should get the spot at seven. Um I think New South Wales are desperate to win this game. You've got to pick a side that's going to win. Don't pick for the future. Don't worry about Nico being in the side before, whatever. Can play him next year. I don't care if Nico plays six. Yeah. I just think Reynolds has got to play seven. He's the Ooh. best halfback in the game. Ooh. I'm betting right up at four, five and a half, four and a half. Okay. Betting right up. Excellent. Very confident. I actually think Cleary pulling out is going to be an advantage to New South Wales. Right. Bit of new blood, a bit of a fresh look. It'll motivate them. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm confident. Awesome. All right. Well, um, one other thing I just want to quickly mention. We filmed a podcast a couple of days ago with Glenn Pollitt and Mark Lamborn from The Rant. If you're a lover of the great game and love hearing and talking about betting and betting strategies and betting mentalities, you definitely need to check that podcast out. We're going to drop it next Wednesday. Um, the other thing is we're about to do the biggest update in Wolf Den history on our app. If you don't have the Wolf Den app, you have to get it. It's the best app in the game. Great community engagement. Definitely will help your punting. Other than that, good luck over the weekend. Thanks for the support of this show. It's going well. We appreciate it. Up the den. See you in the den soon. Bye. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.